for years I have been fascinated about the 35 millimeter look in photography. Since I was a child, all my photos that my parents took of me were with film because I was born in 1987 before all the new digital revolution. So film really is so nostalgic and in some ways it carries so much personal meaning. And in a way, since I have been into digital photography, I have always tried to go back to that nostalgia and to those colors and to those feelings that I get whenever I look at my own photos or at photos shot on film from photographers that I have admired since, since I really got interested in photography. So today I want to share with you one application that, in my opinion, offers you unparalleled editing if you are interested in this film look for your photography. And this application is the Hanser. Now the Hanser started as a plugin for DaVinci Resolve, which is a video application. And just recently they came out with this plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. I was extremely interested in this even before the plugin for Lightroom came out because the creator of the Hanser actually wrote a book, Life Like Color, which opened my mind to understand color and harmony and perception and so many elements that you don't actually hear a lot. So he created this application based on his own experience and on his knowledge. And actually there's this book that you can read for free online and it really will blow your mind and it will also allow you to understand this application much better. Now, I don't want to go so much into detail about how the application works because there's so many other videos that touch on this, but I want to mention a little bit about the workflow that I have now that I have played with it for a couple months. I feel like it's still an application that has so much room from, for improvement in the workflow side because yes, the results are amazing. Yes, the processing is amazing, but the way that you get there is not the best. It could be a little bit better. Whenever you buy the answer or download a trial, they will give you this PDF, you know, with a lot of information. It tells you that inside Photoshop or Lightroom, you have to have these settings with exposure lowered, you know, one and then minus contrast and then plus blacks. And no one <laughs> tells you this on YouTube because I feel like we're so used to deal with presets or lots or just colors that you just apply on top and filters. Lightroom itself is processing the image, you know, like the raw image that you bring in already is adding contrast. But the answer gives you the opportunity to take the creative decisions about the contrast or about the black point or about the white point inside the plugin itself. So that's why they suggest that for the best results, you bring the exposure down, the contrast down, bring the, bring the blacks up, and also remove all the sharpening. Also, there's an article on their website that explains how you have to set up everything for sRGB and both Lightroom and Photoshop. I will give you a link to that article. It's kind of important, I think, and this is so you can get consistent results. And once you have set up everything, you can go in here in Lightroom. There's different ways to deal with the photos and the application. One is inside Lightroom, one is inside Photoshop as a smart object, which I will cover that in a second. And also you can do a mix of both. That's kind of the overview of the process or this workflow that I am explaining to you. Here, this is the most simple one. I'm inside Lightroom and I will edit it in the application. Edit a copy. TIFF, guys, open the file as a TIFF file because you want to send as much information from the raw file to the answer. I have seen people open JPEGs here. You already are missing a lot of information that would be helpful if you are processing the colors. sRGB because that's how this the answer works. 16 bits, highest resolution. Okay, let's go. And we are inside the application. 
Like I mentioned, there's a huge amount of wonderful tutorials that explain in detail all the tools. Let's just not go into that too much. I will just give it a very quick, very quick edit. I figure that also not a lot of tutorials are dealing with, uh, how do you say this, uh, street photography. And I love street photography. Halation here, we have a little bit of halation around the cell phone. You see that red glow, the same with the bloom. Anyways, here are just some very general settings. The Hanser doesn't have an easy way to batch process images. So the closest thing that I have found is just making a preset. Here I already made one preset for another image. I will make this one. And I apply it. I'm back into Lightroom. And if I want to apply that to another one, I have to open it again in the answer and apply the last preset that I did, for example. And then I would just modify it a little bit. Presets, in my opinion, is the only way that you have right now to deal with a lot of images. Okay, so I already edited two images in the answer. Let's go this third one. Instead of opening here in Lightroom, I will go to my folder and show you what happens if I open it in Photoshop directly. Here you have the same settings. I already have a preset for that. So basic the hands, auto perspective. Basically, I'm bringing the exposure down. I am raising the blacks, the contrast down. Here, as you can see, the blacks are almost clipping. So I feel like maybe the original image when I took it was already a bit underexposed. What we want is a flat image. No peaking and we are contrast so that we can add that contrast in the answer. And attention, here is the interesting part. You have to click open as object. You can open it, of course, like normally, but you will uh, get stuck with the settings that you decide in camera row. This is the real advantage that you can open it as a smart object. So anytime you can double click this image, you will go back. You can change the exposure again. This means now you can even apply the answer. Let's just do one preset that we did. Uh, this one is a color plus, a little bit more natural. Let's add more contrast by bringing this down. Let's just click OK to show you what I mean. Here we're in Photoshop and it applied the Hanser film as a smart filter. And you can double click it and you can come back and continue to change the settings. For me, this is the real advantage of using the Hanser inside Photoshop. And even though it takes maybe a little bit more time, uh, I would do it maybe for images that I'm going to print very big or that are, are extra important. You know, here I can even uh, change the background, see how it will look with different backgrounds, the contrast, all that. And I can save as, you see, on my computer, on my computer. I can save it, as, save it as a TIFF or as a Photoshop file. And I can, anytime in the future, still come back and still work a little bit more on the colors inside the Hanser. Or even here, even in the in camera row, I can still change the exposure or the brightness or the highlights or anything. And it would automatically be applied to the smart filter. In this case, the Hanser. This is really, really, really cool. You can even make an action, for example, where you apply it. And then here you have the option of automating batch. So here you have a default action. You can choose an action very easily. You can have a folder full of images, apply one action, which applies your filter, and then export all of that to another folder. This is a messy way of dealing with a big amount of images, but you know, it, it is possible. It's there. I prefer to stay inside Lightroom most of the time. Anyway, let's just close this one.
here inside Lightroom, I wanted to show you. If you want to have that same uh, capability of editing and re-editing the changes that you make to an image inside the Hanser, you can still right click here. You would see edit in, open a smart object in Photoshop. By doing that, and this image, by the way, the one that I just sent from Lightroom, I already, you know, reduce the contrast and all of that. All of those settings are extremely important. And I suggest that you make them into a preset I did here so that you don't forget and you really can squeeze out as much of the usefulness that you can get from this plugin. So we are in Photoshop. Again, we are in the Hanser. Very quickly, we will just add the preset that I already did before. I feel like the halation is a little bit too much in this case. In general, it's okay. Just for the just for the test, just to explain you. Here I will click save. And I can close Photoshop. Here in, in Lightroom, I have the image already that came back from Photoshop. And, you know, it's part of my library now. Whenever I want to open it, and if I see that I want to edit the colors a little bit more again, without starting from the beginning, then I can just right click, edit in Photoshop. And in this case, I would select edit original, no more open as a smart object. And here it is. I can modify it. This is kind of like the best of both worlds, but <laughs> once you see the size, the file size, you know, of the image that you just created is too much. I really wish there was a better way. And just as an extra tip, guys, you can also actually use the plugin inside Capture One. I really love to use Capture One a lot for uh, processing my Fuji files. Even though I use Lightroom for organization and for keeping my library and everything here in Capture One, you actually don't have to do all of the reducing the exposure and the contrast and all that because Capture One already has something called linear response, which means it's giving you the raw image as flat as possible. You don't want any clipping and you can also right click and edit with send to the Hanser Lightroom. I haven't mentioned so much about the tools. Each tool really has so much that you can explore. I suggest that you go into the website and read all the articles because they even have articles about every tool and how they build them and how the analog process works. I wish, I really wish there was a way to use the answer on my phone because sometimes I'm away from my computer and I really wish they would come up with a mobile application at some point. I know they did in the past, but um, I mean, I'm just kind of waiting for that to come back. In general, I really suggest you check this out if you haven't. This video is not paid by them. I actually bought the application from my own money. I just saw that it came out and it was a day or two days and I knew that I had to get it. I haven't used it in my wedding photography work because of the issues of processing so many images at the same time. But whenever I have a picture that I'm not sure where I could go creatively, I open it in the answer and it gives me ideas. It inspires me to continue editing inside Lightroom or Capture One. So yeah, guys, anything that I can do for you, uh, if you have any question about the application, if you would like to know some more about color or my thoughts about contrast and saturation and all that because I tell you it's a huge science. Uh, just let me know and maybe I can make some more videos to share about this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.